what I'm going to show is that we can identify the false teachers. Okay, so first off, Christ says, ye shall know them by their fruit. You may not be able to read their heart, but you can determine if somebody has good character or not by their actions. Now, Malachi chapter 3 is a prophecy dealing with the end of the world. And it says, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. That is a promise. That is a promise that we will be able to identify the evil ones and we'll know who are good and we'll know who is evil. Christ let us know, told us that it's by their fruits, so we should pay attention to the fruits. Now notice this also, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Let's build upon this. We can discern between the righteous and the wicked, and we have to be able to discern between them because it, our command, we are commanded, the church is commanded to put away from them the wicked people, to excommunicate the wicked. It says, do not ye judge them that are within. You don't judge them that are without, those outside the church. God judges them, but your duty is to judge those that are within. The Bible says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. So there's a specific duty to call out the sins in the church and to rid the church of the wicked ones. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. It is as easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone. And I place this in here because we don't live in an age where people are still fashioning wooden idols and stones so much. But the fact that it's just as easy to make an idol of false doctrine, there's an equivalency there. You can have an idol of wood or you can have an uh, idol of a false doctrine. To the Lord, it's the same. So these false theories, these false doctrines that these false teachers are teaching in our church today, the king of the north is the papacy, the triune God, uh, the new view on the daily, August 11th, 1840 never happened, the reinterpretation of the trumpets and the seals. This is our whole prophetic message has, it's a new religion. It's, it's, been, it's been remade. It's been, it's been refashioned. These are idols. These men are idolaters. Conrad Vine, Walter Weith, Stephen Bohr. Go down the list. These are idolaters. These are the false prophets of Baal in our day. So what we say is these men have a false light kindled by the hellish torch of Satan. Right? We cry aloud. We spare not. We lift up our voice like a trumpet. Curse be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord. There are various sins. There's a few that are especially bad that are abominations. Eating swine, sodomy, also graven images, molten images. Now, if these molten images of stone and these idols of wood are an abomination, then also these false doctrines and theories are also idols too. and would also constitute an abomination. I'm going to give some evidence for that. The work of the hands of the craftsman, and putteth it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. We need to say, Amen. This is an abomination. Those that receive the seal of God are crying, sighing and crying for the abominations in the land. When you go into a Catholic church, you do actually see statues and people kneeling down to statues and graven images that people are worshiping. Nobody's that I know in the Adventist church is worshiping Mary. That's not our particular idolatry that we're involved in. We're involved in more of these. In our church, we have a lot of false doctrines and theories. And these are an abomination. These are an abomination to the Lord. 
And I'm, and I'm saying all this because I don't want anybody to have any sympathy for these men, for these false teachers. And our work is to expose them. If any, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wise of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. You'll see in the Bible that these molten images are called gods, namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto them, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. And this is if it's your brother, or the son of thy mother, or even your wife. If they entice thee, if they are an idolaters, you're not to conceal them, you're not to pity them. What are you supposed to do? You're not to spare them. But thou shall surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you. So how is this applicable to our day? Well, we have these false teachers. We have those within the brotherhood that are teaching these wicked ideas. Take the triune God, for instance. That's an easy one to acknowledge. There are men that are that are trying to convince us to worship the triune God. We are to metaphorically speaking, we are to destroy them, annihilate them. And it doesn't matter how close they are, even if they're wife, brother, mother, we're not to spare, we're, we're not to have pity, we're to seize them and to kill them. And actually, the closer you are to them, the Lord wants you to put your hands on them first. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterward, afterwards, the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. It's a brutal death too. And it's a public death. It's a public death. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. What's the moral of this? This is again written for us at the end of the world. We are crying and sighing for the abominations that be done in the land. And we are to, we're not to judge those without, we're to judge those within, right? God judges those without. But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. If he's an idolater, stone him. What we are to do, metaphorically speaking, we are to annihilate him. And we do that by exposing their doctrine, by excommunicating them from our fellowship, by driving them far from the people of God. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? What the Apostle Paul is teaching us is that if we have one evil member, we are to cut them off. If just one wicked man is worthy of excommunication, which causes the souring of the whole lump, which is the church. How much more shall so many wicked offices, so many wicked men, which use them, and so many wicked guides, and so many church members, some ignorant and some willful, who are held captive to these false teachers. And they continue in this way, causing an awful stench in the nostrils of God because they have soured the entire lump. The church that is inundated with false teachers is not the beautiful, fragrant bride of Christ. Rather, the church that is leavened with sin is a smelly whore, a diseased harlot, an abomination unto God. Brothers and sisters, I have something for you that you might be very interested in. I have charts available for purchase. They are wonderful study aids and they make a great evangelistic tool. 
The 1843 and 1850 charts are fulfillments of Bible prophecy. They are very special. There is a link in the description to the store below this video. This is a great way to support the ministry.